Hi everyone, welcome to this Black Shark Den tutorial video. Uh, I'm DJ, I'm one of the instructors within Black Shark Den, qualified on both Huey and Gazelle. I'm just going to give you a quick um, tutorial introduction today into the intro flight that you can expect to do with Black Shark Den when you join us. So you've signed up, you've gone through the Discord and the website, and you're ready to fly. Speak to one of you, um, get in touch with an IP, uh, and we'll get you onto this intro flight. So what we focus on here today um, is some basic flying skills, basically um, to make sure that you're of the basic standard that we expect of our pilots at BSD. We do have a training pipeline, um, but it's, it is a requirement that you are able to um, start the aircraft, that you're familiar with the systems to a basic extent, um, and have some basic flying skill. All right, so what we're going to do today, we're just going to brief you through on uh, what, you, what we expect of you, and give you an idea of what to practice if you don't think you're quite there and ready for us. Okay, so uh, we've got the aircraft running here on the pan here at Sochi, which is our um, primary airfield. Like I say, we'd expect you to be able to start the aircraft, so get in, start it competently, and get the aircraft set up ready to fly. So, what we'll start with first is some in and out of ground effect hover checks. So, uh, what the purpose of this is to basically ensure that the um, aircraft has got sufficient power to uh, lift to the hover and hold a stable hover. Now we've got an empty aircraft today um, so I'm expecting to have loads of power in hand but where this will become more relevant as you go down the line with Blackshot down um, as you get into the operations and the operational flying with us you'll find that you're loaded up uh, or we're hot and high and therefore it's really important to check the performance of the aircraft before you depart out on your sorting. Okay so um, I'll talk you through each step, each phase, make sure that you're happy and, um, and describe what I'm looking for as I'm flying the aircraft and in terms of on the gauges, alright? So, let's get going. So the aircraft's positioned into wind. I'm set up, um, as you can see, on the lines that go out into my 12 o'clock and my 3 o'clock, which is a really nice um, reference point for me. Okay, and it's, If you're out on your intro flight, just tell your instructor if you want to, if you want to use these lines or wherever you want to go on the airfield to position, give yourself some nice references before you start the exercise. All right. So, aircraft's pointing into wind, which is 06, and I'm just going to lift into the 10 foot hover. So, a quick look around, I'm all clear, and I'm going to gently bring in the collective feeling for the aircraft to go light on its skids. A little bit of left pedal just to counter the torque and lift into the hover. It doesn't have to be quick, it's nice and controlled, and up to the 10 foot hover where we hold position. And just check your references, make sure you're not drifting, because that's what they're there for. And then some more control inputs. There we go, and get a feel. Get yourself settled before you start any sort of exercise, just get yourself settled. Okay, I'm just going to do a quick look in at the gauges. So I'm showing 30 psi of torque and I'm within the green on my EGT, which is the big one. And we're sitting at around 92% on the N1. RPM's matched at uh, 6600, and our T's and P's are all normal. So we've got good power, the engine's not under strain, and we're comfortably sat in the 10-foot hover. The next thing we need to do is climb up to about 50 feet and just check our out-of-ground effect power. Now again, if you're loaded up, you might not even be able to do this because you might be relying on the ground effect to enable you to um, be off the ground. But we're slick today, we've got nothing on the aircraft, haven't got any weapons, so I'm just going to climb slowly and vertically up to the 50 foot hover. So I'm looking ahead, and I'm looking to the right. Nice and gentle. Passing 20 feet. Now you'll notice a big change in your references at this point. You're going to have to look further out, 45 feet, 50 foot there. Again, get yourself settled. So pick more references that are further away. So in the 12 o'clock for me now, I've got a hanger at the far end of dispersal. And that's the left hand edge of that is my 12 o'clock marker. And into the 3 o'clock, I've got the line on the taxiway. And then I've just picked a couple of trees beyond that that I've got on most of my 3 o'clock markers. And they're just going to help me to hold position. The aircraft becomes a little more twitchy at this height because you're naturally looking for those references. But you'll also notice looking in that you're pulling a little more power. Again, we're slick here, and I'm pulling now about 31 to 32 psi, still in the green on my EGT. 
so we're all good. Okay, so I'm going to descend back down to 10 feet and then to the next phase. As you go through your time with BSD, we'll test you with more weight. Um, you'll be taught how to fly the aircraft with um, max or what mass, so fully loaded. And the techniques that are required to get away from the ground in that sort of configuration. But for now, we're slick and it's nice and easy. So the next exercise then is spot turns. So you'll be doing these both in and out of ground effect. So it'll be a 90 degree spot turn left, a 90 degree spot turn right, and then a 360 degree spot turn both ways as well. And this is just checking your um, capability to handle the aircraft in the turn. With BSD you'll be looking at um, flying into confined areas, um, and it's going to be tight both with other aircraft and the scenery. So it's just making sure that you're capable of keeping the aircraft in a nice tight position as you turn through 360 degrees. So we'll do the 90 degree one first, I'll go tail to the right, nose to the left. So a quick look to the right, tail is clear right, and a little bit of left pedal. It doesn't need to be mega fast. Keep looking, keep looking out the window. And there we are. So now the line going out to my 3 o'clock, and the line going into my 12 o'clock, I've re my references, and I've got a new backdrop marker as well for my hover height. Okay, back to centre then, so tail clear to the left. And we're going to bring the aircraft nice and steadily back around to our original position. Sweet. Quick settle, we find the position, tail clear to the left, and 90 degrees to the right. And hold, pick references, set the aircraft, tells clear to the right, back to the left. Okay, back in our original position, and I'm just going to reset the aircraft, and it's going to be a 360 turn. So the key with this one is, you, as you turn the aircraft around through 360, you're always picking new references, okay? Looking out the window, watch your backdrop markers for your height, and a quick glance in at the radar if you feel you have to. It's all about looking out the window. So, 12 o'clock, I'm looking left as well, and I'm already picking my, what will be my 12 o'clock marker when I come to the left. Okay, and it's really important that you start in the right position. I've just drifted forward a little, so I'm just going to move back. Okay, touch clear to the right, and I see the left hand 360. So again, nice steady pace. Initially, we were pushing against the wind. So now I'm picking a new marker in the 12 o'clock and a new marker out to my left as well. As you go through the wind, the tail goes through the wind, it's then going to want to weather cock, so you probably just need to release the pedal just a tad, just to control that rate of turn. Again, keep picking your markers as you go round. And back in. Get the aircraft over the spot. And we're going to go the other way. So tail clear to the left, still at 10 feet, and right hand turn. And all the way around again, as you go, picking your references, watching your backdrop, nice and slow, no need to rush it. The quicker you go, the harder it is for you. Okay. And as you go, you might just need, depending on the wind strength, a little bit of into wind side flip as well. Okay. Sweet, so that's our um, inside ground effect spot turns done. What we're going to do now then, we're going to climb back up to 50 feet and we're going to do a couple of 360 degree out of ground effect spot turns. Okay, so clear above and I'm just going to climb up to 50 feet. Steady. I'm just going to reset my references. Okay, good place there. Close to the right. And the big one with this is that your reference is going to be further out. It's always more difficult when you're higher to maintain that hover position. So you just really need to keep that head moving. 
uh, focusing on some reference points and your backdrop markers as well as you go around. Quick glance in at the red arc, just check your height. We're all good. Keep that head moving. Keep that right turn under control. And back to the start. Okay. And the other way, so tail's clear to the left, nose is coming right. Just slip off my marker tad, but still well within where I need to be. Again, just adjust, keep the head moving, and adjust on your point as required. And now we are back at the start. Okay. And we'll just come back to the 10 foot hover. So so that is the um, Inside and outside ground effect spot turns complete and your hover check as well. Okay. It's always good to do a hover check every time you go flying, just so you know how much power you've got. Um, and also a spot turn on the power pedal, especially if it's windy, uh, will give you a good idea on your limitation in terms of what sort of power you've got on the tail rotor. So the next thing we're going to do is jump into a circuit. I'm just going to land on and go through a few things before we go up into the circuit. Okay, so when you come into, um, into Fly with Blackstock then you'll be introduced to um, how we do things at the airfield. Normally it's full ATC, I'm not going to bother with that on this, um, on this intro flight. Uh, but you'll hear the IPs and probably other members when you come flying, um, doing all the radio procedures while you're out flying. Okay, we're going to go up into the circuit. Current runway active is 06. Um, so you can see if you look down at the um, HSI in, in the central mag, uh, console, I've actually bugged 06. So it, it helps out massively, especially in your early stages, if you bug the runway heading. Uh, that bug will then move around the, um, the compass rows as you go around the circuit and help you to work out sort of where the runway is and where you are in relation to um, the circuit. We're going to do a square circuit today, uh, so we'll depart out on runway heading, we'll climb to about 400 feet, we'll turn right 90 degrees continue our climb to 700 feet where we'll level off, accelerate to 90 knots before turning downwind, heading 240, running downwind to our base leg, we'll then start our descent, slow down, turn right onto base before then onto finals and back into the airfield for a notional point on the airfield. All right. This um, sort of standard basic academic circuit is what we will expect you to be able to achieve on your intro flight. So let's go through that now. So again, I'm not going to worry about the ATC calls. Quick look around. There's no one around us. I'm all clear. Left into the hopper. Into the 10 foot hopper. Another quick check inside at my power. All's good. Tail's clear to the left. I'm just going to go out onto this, uh, onto the active runway from this taxi right here. Always looking around. Left and right. We're still clear. And a nice 10 foot hover, fast walking pace as you look out the window sideways. Obviously your um, ability to look around depends on whether you're 2D or VR, but if you're in VR you should be really maximising that head movement, looking around as much as you can. Okay, quick look left and right. It's not an issue. To encroach. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do Good practice is to do a quick look out turn. So, tail's clear to the left. I'm just going to do a quick look behind. No one above, no one around, nothing seen, nothing heard. You can continue that right hand turn around onto runway heading. Okay. So, we're in the hover. We've got power in hand. We're matched at 6600. We're clear above. We are clear ahead. And I'm going to transition. And as we transition, we just want to gently nose forwards. Maintaining 10 feet, maintain your height with collective. As we go through ETL, the aircraft will want to climb, allow it to do so, and we're looking for 70 knots, which is the best rate of climb speed for the Huey. Okay, okay. 
Keep an eye on your balance ball as well. Make sure you're still in balance. I'm looking for about 400 feet, which is where we're going to start the lookout. Okay, so looking around to the right, it's going to be a right hand turn from here. We're all clear and start on the right hand turn. 20 degrees angle of bank is enough. And remember to bear in mind the wind is from the left as well, so it's going to be pushing us right. So I'm probably going to turn to about 80 degrees from my original heading. Keep an eye on your heading bug. And remember that there's markers at um, 12, 6, 3 and 9 on the uh, HSI. And there's 700 feet. Exciting for 90. There's 90 knots, so trim it there. Sorting things out, getting settled. Looking to the right. All clear. Turn them right. As we come downwind, bear in mind the wind's now behind us and your ground speed's going to be quite high. So this could be quite a fast leg. What we're looking for is our landing point to go into our 4 o'clock. Both the airfield was on our left, our 8 o'clock position. As you run downwind, mostly eyes out, just checking on your instruments. Speed's good, heading's good. We're maintaining 700 feet. And looking back out for that landing point position. Looking forwards. Okay, that looks like it's in a nice position now. So, I'm going to start my descent. First thing to do is get a rate of descent on. So, I'm going to lower the collective. And then I'm going to trim the aircraft back to start reducing speed. And then I'm going to roll in. And I'm going to look to level at 500 feet there. So bringing the collective back in. 500 feet and roughly about 60 to 70 knots. Again wind's coming from the right so I'm probably just going to keep the turn coming just so we don't get pushed out left. And now I'm looking down the runway for that final turn with that position so I'm just going to start my roll in now so I can judge it in based on the where the runway is. Maintaining that height around 500 feet and 60 knots as well. About there. So I'm now going to maintain this attitude basically until um, the taxiway that we uh, left from which is in the, in the centre of the airfield with the uh, radar on the right hand side of it is sort of central from my windscreen and then I'm going to start my descent I'm looking sideways from my ground speed I want to be a fast walking pace all the way down and also watch my rate of descent bear in mind on the way down that uh, you're looking for 30 knots and at that point to stay with above well keep your rate of descent below 500 feet per minute because that's BRS parameters that's a good position there, so I'm just going to start my descent. So we want to keep that sight picture nice, keep the um, landing point in the centre of the windscreen, pretty much the same place in the windscreen, and looking sideways as well to watch that ground speed. In the Huey, if you use trim, you probably want to be doing a little bite to trim all the way down. If that landing point starts coming up in the windscreen, just reduce your rate of descent. If it starts going down in the windscreen, you're getting steep, you just want to increase your rate of descent. Bear in mind if you're hitting thir nearly 30 knots um, and you think you're not going to make it, you might have to do a go around. So there's 30 knots there. Our rate of descent is under control. I'm still looking sideways. I've got a nice forward pace, fast walking pace looking out the window. And the landing point is maintaining its position in the windscreen. As we get closer to the ground, you want to extend your aiming point about 20 metres beyond your original. 
so that you bring the aircraft down over the original landing point, going to not short. Okay, and now we are back in. Good practice to do a quick look out turn before you go back in, so the tower is clear to the left. Just going to go a quick turn behind us, just to check that there's nothing coming in behind us before we start taxiing. Happy it's clear, nothing seen, nothing heard, and we'll just taxi back to this first one. Again, when you're taxiing, you're looking for a fast walking pace. So looking sideways again, just maintaining that speed and 10 foot hover, 10 foot taxi and even. Back to our original parking spot. Tails close to the right. And set the aircraft down. And that'll be pretty much it. So that would then be essentially the absolute basics of your intro flight complete. Uh, you'll probably find that um, your IPs will take you out to do a bit more. You'll probably do a bit of formation flying, um, you know, uh, out to one of our LZs as well. Um, but that's essentially not a requirement. Uh, what we've shown you in this video is the sort of absolute bare minimum skills required of what you'd expect um, and hopefully you're already at a point where you can watch this video and go I'm happy with that, I'll go straight into it and you'll be confident um, to come and fly with us. Um, we do a bit, once you're through the, um, the initial flight um, you can expect to, to see some training build up. We do have a um, quite extensive training regime that our pilots go through um, but it's perfectly doable for anyone who has these basic skills. So hopefully that was of use to you. Um, I'll hopefully see you on the servers before long, um, certainly in the Discord. Uh, come and join us by Discord. Um, we've got a Facebook page as well so feel free to get in touch with any questions through there if you want to. And uh, happy flying for more BSD. Hopefully we'll see you soon. DJ out.